Tennessee at a crossroads. Let's talk about it, and then let's hear what Kelly Harper had to say about it. Locked on women's basketball starts now. Ogumba Wallet for the win. You are locked on women's basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball. Well, hi, everyone, and happy Thursday. I'm Howard Magdal, founder and editor of The Next and your host for Locked On Women's Basketball. Thank you for making us your first listen every day. Women's Basketball, six days a week, brought to you by me and the amazing staff we have at thenexthoops.com. You can subscribe $9 a month, $72 a year, over 100 reported pieces on women's basketball, and of course, six days a week coming to you in your ears. So here's what's coming up in your ears today. We're going to talk segment one, all about Tennessee. Tennessee is a team. It is a land of contrast. This is the best way for me to describe it. I want to talk to you about some things I'm seeing, some interesting things we're going to learn tonight, but more to the point beyond tonight and the big game against South Carolina what we're going to learn about Tennessee for the remainder of the season. And then I talked to Kelly Harper about some of these details, their offensive efficiency, emergence of players like Tess Darby, and just what are reasonable expectations for this program going forward. And so let's start there. Okay. Let's start there. Segment one brought to you as the whole show is of course, by FanDuel. And we'll get into some of the fun promotions FanDuel has for us in a little while. Tennessee is somehow talked about all the time as a disappointment. I guess that happens when your program has won eight national championships, but none since 2008, when it was, you know, built in so many fundamental ways by Pat Summit, who is no longer with us. And instead, it's one of Pat's point guards. It's Kelly Harper. Well, no, they haven't made the Final Four won the national championship this year, in part because, you know, that doesn't happen until March. But here's what Tennessee has done coming into Thursday. They are 20 and 9. They have 12 wins already in the SEC. They are doing it in a variety of ways. This is a team that excels in a number of different areas. There is talent up and down the roster brought in by Kelly Harper. They've done it despite the fact that Tamari Key played only nine games this year. It's just, it's a successful season by any reasonable measure. The reasonable measure cannot be, are you Pat Summit level Tennessee? Not just because Pat Summit is one of the all-time greats, if not the best coach in the history of the sport. That's a different conversation for a different time. That involves Gino Oriema, that involves Tara Vanderveer, that I believe will involve Don Staley, maybe already does. Uh, eight to two championships. But when they did, it matters. And that's the other point. This is to take nothing away from Tennessee. But Pat Summit won those championships at a time that many, many, many athletic departments were not investing in women's basketball. And you're doing it at a time when South Carolina wasn't Dawn Staley. South Carolina wasn't doing anything about women's basketball. Go back and look at Mississippi State. In the pre-Vic Schaefer era. It's just a different landscape. Now I've talked to people who longtime veterans in women's college basketball, they'll tell you, you put in a little money and you finish third in a major conference. That's not how it works today. It is competitive in a different way. And so here 
I just think you have to evaluate Kelly Harper and Tennessee on their own terms, okay? 20 wins in the SEC is really, really impressive. This is, you know, this is an SEC where the middle of the pack are folks like Coach Abe's Georgia, what Sam Purcell's doing in Mississippi State, Mike Neighbors in Arkansas. Gabriella Lewis has a great piece over at the netstoops.com about those three, by the way. Make sure you check it out. So for Tennessee to be doing what they're doing matters. And then there's this. Tennessee under Holly Warlick had some success, made some tournaments, but they tended to regress as the season went along. That was always my big concern. And everyone wanted Holly to do well. There's not a person you need to talk to in this sport who doesn't love Holly Warwick. But you weren't seeing her teams progress as the season went along. Kelly Harper's team, if you look at their best offensive ratings over the course of the season, game by game, thank you to her hoop stats, who does a great job on this. Three of their top 10 have been their top three most recent games. You look at what this team is doing on the boards. Their rebound rate is eighth in the country, 57.2%. Their offensive rebound rate is sixth in the country. So they're going up against South Carolina. That is strength versus strength. Oh, I can't wait to see this game tonight. Oh, man. South Carolina, Tennessee. They're royalty. But they're also getting more and more out of Rakea Jackson. It just keeps getting better. 18.8 points per game and 27.1 minutes per game. You are seeing Jordan Horston starting to find another level with offensive efficiency. Horston last three games, 8 for 13, 7 for 15, 7 for 16. And you're even seeing people like Tess Darby reach another level. Tess Darby has always been able to shoot. You hear what Kelly Harper has to say about her. You know, 41.7% from three, and she's taking almost five a game. But this is the critical thing for me. Tess Darby's played 34 minutes in each of the past two games for Tennessee. This is a player developing. This is a player finding another level. For Tennessee writ large to be what they need to be, they need to find individuals who reach another level. That's what they're doing. That's what they're doing under Kelly Harper. So, like, what success for Tennessee this year? If Tennessee reaches the Elite Eight, are we sitting there and saying, well, Pat Summit would have done better? If they're in the Sweet 16, is that not enough? I don't know, friends. I go back and look at a team that reached the Sweet 16 last year before losing to Louisville. That didn't seem like a disappointment to me. Louisville was a better team. They did not get out of the first two rounds. The year before that, lost to a Michigan team with Nas Hillman. That was elite. There are just more good teams out there. Whether you are Sweet 16, Elite 8, Final 4 is largely a question of matchup now. It just wasn't the case. It wasn't the case during the Pat Summit era. So I've heard a lot of negativity about Kelly Harper, somebody who is as devoted as anybody, somebody who has built something at a place where you could argue it's harder to build because of the looming shadow of Pat Summit. I'm fascinated to see. We're going to learn a lot. So, without further ado, let me tell you about FanDuel, and then let's hear from Kelly Harper, huh? FanDuel is offering a crazy offer. You get a no-sweat first bet 
of up to $1,000. So you get bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Again, a $1,000 no sweat first bet, right? You can do anything. You can do the point spread, money line, total player props, points, rebounds, assists, even like two by three, two three-pointers scored in the first three minutes. They do, you know, anything you could dream up, you can bet on at FanDuel. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss the chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, a sport official sports betting partner of the NBA. Go next to Howard. Hey coach, thanks for the time as always. Um, couple for you. Um, you know, you, you mentioned about the amount of rebounds that South Carolina grabbed. You guys are obviously six in the country in often in rebound percentage total as well. How much do you feel as if being able to neutralize that advantage in South Carolina has had is critical to winning this one? I, I think it's I think it's a huge stat and, you know, they can they can really change the complexion of a game on the boards. Um, you know, we've our board play has given us um, great opportunities uh, this year. And, and I, I love how how much better we've gotten. Um, but they're. Fifty percent is that's just a, a ridiculous. No, I mean, I think it's forty nine, really, but. Um, that's that's another another level. And so for us, um, I think it's going to be critical that every single time the shot goes up, we're uh, we're disciplined in what we need to be doing. Um, and, and that doesn't mean you're going to get them all. <laughs> you're not going to you're not going to shut them down there, but you you've just got to make sure that is a point of emphasis and you're battling in that area. And I guess the flip side of it is, they're obviously terrific on the defensive boards as well. And so the fact that you guys are coming into this, three of your best 10 offensive rating performances this year have been your last three games. How much does your next level of efficiency help you as you prepare for this one? Well, I, I think it's um, I think it's good because I think we're in, in better habits to be able to, um, you know, get in there and give ourselves those opportunities. Um, you have to work a little harder. Um, you have to be a little quicker, you know, maybe anticipate a little bit better to be able to find those opportunities just because they, they, you know, they can just grab defensive boards because of their size. You know, we've just not faced this size in quite a while. So um, we understand that you're not just going to um, skip in the lane and grab an offensive board. That's not happening on Thursday. So you've got to, you got to be able to move some people around. Appreciate it. Thank you, Coach. Maria. Coach, looking at you know, various outcomes happening in the last you know week or two, especially uh, close games in particular, this is when everybody's pretty much running on fumes. I mean, every team is just trying to get to that finish line. You, of course, have extended your bench as much as you can in a lot of games. How do you feel like your team is conditioning-wise at this point to, to make it through this final week? I feel pretty good about it, to be honest with you. I think, um, you know, we've we've been strategic on how we have practiced and where off days have come. And, you know, I think we've been also very strategic how we handle the weight room and their uh, conditioning level during this time. Um, you know, one of the things that I've continued to be impressed with here at Tennessee is our recovery and how our athletic trainers and medical staff really work with our players um, individually to get them feeling as good as they can possibly feel with um, elite level recovery. Um, you know, we're constantly talking to our team about how, how they feel and, and what their bodies feel like. Um, you know, I, so I feel pretty good about that. Obviously we've tried to play several people. We get some minutes in and um, I think that's been important as well. 
Kelly, just from the schedule, you really couldn't be more prepared to take on, you know, the undefeated reigning national champions. What do you feel like your team has taken from those experiences of big games, like playing at LSU, this the big game at UConn at home? What do you feel like they've taken mentally from just playing in a big game like that and, and how they feel going into Thursday? Yeah, I think the I think the best thing for us is just the experience and having having been in these games and um you know, having confidence when you step out there. I, I think that's that's important because if you don't, if you don't have that you don't have a chance in, in a game like this. And I, I think our players do, um, you know, they, they feel comfortable in, in that environment. Um, and I think that's also, also really important uh, going into the game on Thursday. Arthur. Hey coach, can you hear me? All right. Yeah. Okay. I uh, just wanted to check in. Uh, I don't anticipate you're going to tell me any uh, tricks of the trade here, but is there anything that you saw Ole Miss did well against South Carolina at home that uh, you might be able to duplicate in this game? Uh, I think they, they mixed up their defense a little bit, uh, but you know, as every, every team, you, you've got to be yourself, you know, and I think we're not, we may have some similarities with Ole Miss, but we don't have completely the the personnel across the board that they do. So I think what you do when you're going into a game, you you watch the games that have been played. You watch how um, other teams have played your opponent. And you, you're trying to pick out some, some things here and there that maybe would work for your team. Um, I think that's not just true for the Ole Miss game, but for all the games that are played. And honestly, this is not just true for South Carolina. It's true for all the teams that you play. So that's how you you do your scouts. You see what has worked, what has not worked. What maybe you could duplicate if you needed to, to make some changes. You guys have had the privilege to play, so, you know, to do some pretty, do, pretty big matchups at home like UConn and some other ranked, you know, opponents. Um, and Ole Miss took, uh, took South Carolina to overtime in their house a few nights ago. So I guess, and the last time you guys played South Carolina, you know, and 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 TBA, you got you guys beat them. So what is it? How important is it to have these huge matchups at home and to be able to play them in TBA? Oh, I, again, I've I've said it. I I want to play all of our games here in Knoxville. Uh, I they won't let me do that, but I want to. Uh, I think it's fun to have this game here. I think it's it's you know it's a great environment anytime you're playing a game here in Thompson Bowling Arena. But um, you know we're gonna we'll have ten or eleven thousand, I suppose, and should be a lot of fun. It should be a, a great environment. Our fans will get into it. Um, there's no doubt that they give us a boost. They they give us a lift, and um, that's why that's why playing at Tennessee is so special. Um, Coach, you've gotten double figures in scoring out of Tess each of the last four games, and her two highest minutes of the season have been the last two. What is allowing her to reach another level, and what are you seeing out of her more specifically in her game? Yeah, well, she's she's always been able to shoot the ball well. Um, we've been able to find her a little bit more. She's getting it off a little bit quicker. Hmm. She's playing with a little bit more confidence um, to even take those shots. Um, I would say one of the biggest areas, though, of growth has been on the other end of the court. Her defense and rebounding um, has been very solid for us. And because of that, it keeps her on the court longer. Uh, we, you know, we don't we don't have to take her out for defensive reasons. And when you can keep her out there on the court, it stretches the defense, gives her opportunities and her teammates are finding her. Um, but uh, she's she's played terrific. I, I'm really proud of how she's played and how her teammates have continued to look for her. Appreciate it. Casey. Coach, I know that some of the emotions got out in senior day, but with this being the last home game of the regular season, have the players expressed any emotion for those seniors that are going to be playing their last home game or potentially – their last home game or any concerns just about the emotions that could flare up with it being that final go at it at home. We haven't talked about it and I haven't, I haven't got a, a feel for that being something that they're dwelling on or thinking about. Um, that to me might be something that catches you right after the game um, as much as anything, because there, there's a lot going into this game. There, there's a lot of, a lot of, um, 
I want to say emotion or uh, competitive fire. There, there's a lot of feelings leading up to the game that I think will be the dominant um, feeling. Um, I don't know that it would be the emotions after the game. That's when it hits you um, pretty hard. Um, so I, I could uh, I could see that that might be coming as well. But you know, I think they they know that. But with with the with the game um in itself they're they're really just locked into that right now Maria. coach you've of course locked up third place in the sec in the number three c and you don't have to scoreboard watch these next two games i guess that that always is sort of eases a team just a little bit you know what's happening next week and then a the second part shamikwa holds off of course in town as a benefit for the Lady Ball Booster Club, how nice will it be to have her there at the game too and see your former teammate? Yeah. So um, uh, first, yes, I'm I'm excited to have have a an idea of what's going to happen next week. We know where we're at. Um, you know the again to do it early enough uh, to me. I'm just proud of our team, the consistency to be able to know you're not playing until Friday. I think that's a big deal. Um, Shamiqua, so just in case y'all hadn't heard, the NCAA did grant her um, like an extra two games. And so she's going to come and play on Thursday, actually. So um, I, I can get her in for a few minutes. She's um, she won't be on the scouting report. So we should we should be able to surprise them with that one. Um, I wish that were a true story. That'd be a lot of fun to be able to to put one of the greatest of all time out on the court. But it'll be it'll be fun to see her and and have her back. Right. Coach, obviously they have Boston and Cook that are two elite level players. Uh, how do you even go about slowing down two players like that? Um. Well, I think the challenge is um, every everyone else around them. <laughs> um, you know, Boston, you you want to limit her touches as best you can. Um, um, Cook, you want to make sure that she doesn't have any open opportunities. You, you know, you don't have any breakdowns to leave her open, but then you've got to do a great job guarding one-on-one -on -one because she's quick off the dribble as well. She's not just a shooter. Um, that's, that's the initial guard, right? That's, that's the, the game plan on them, but you've also got to guard them both in transition. Um, you've got to keep both of them off the boards, um, and then you can't have breakdowns elsewhere that's going to lead to opportunities for them. And, you know, they're, they're, this team that we're playing is is much bigger than just two players. They're, those two players are terrific um, basketball players. But everybody else around them, around them and doing their job um, really allows those two to shine. Right. So it's kind of a fun follow-up with Shamiqua. If you went one-on-one -on -one today, you and Shamiqua, who wins? <laughs> I mean, oh, the competitor in me would love to say that I could take her, but yeah, no, that's not happening. <laughs> I would love to say that, but not so much, not so much. I don't know if she's done anything uh, recently. I don't know what her what her game is like right now, but I, I got a feeling it wouldn't matter. <laughs> All right, thank you everyone for jumping on with us today. Cora, I want to say congratulations to you for your um, for your award. That's really cool. Very deserving. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. See you guys. Thanks for making Locked On Women's Basketball your first listen today. Now make your second listen, Game to Game NBA. Every moment, every top performance, every result. Locked On Game to Game covers every game from across the NBA with local analysis that only Locked On can deliver. Follow Dame to Dame Locked on NBA. Available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get podcasts. Thanks so much for listening to us today. Tomorrow we'll be back with you. The great Jackie Powell will be talking about all things Athletes Unlimited. AU, it is here and it is interesting as to be. Until then, I am Howard Magdal thanking you for making us part of your day every day. As the great Peps Newman says, think women's basketball. Have a great Thursday, everybody. Ogumba Wallet for the win. You are locked on women's basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball.